Hey guys, Wayne here from H2 Tech Videos. Today starting a new series on Photoshop for beginners and dummies. Only because people are used to that term, something something for dummies, whatever. I'm going to teach you how to use Photoshop for free. There are a lot of paid courses online, but I've been using this program for probably about 10 years and I can share my expertise with you for the low, low price of zero. So, uh, in this first video, we're just going to focus on sort of where everything is and what the different tools are that are available in the second third fourth fifth video we will go over actually adding text and images if you feel like you know the basics you can jump to that right now but for those of you that know nothing let's start with the basics so we're gonna start with a few things you wanna make sure you can see on your screen because they're gonna be very important to you so first come up to window and I want you to go down to history and click on that this is an important tab because it allows you to sort of undo something if you make a mistake or you may get halfway through a design and you don't like it you can actually go back uh, up to a certain point and make changes so you definitely want to be able to see this the second thing that you want to be able to see is your layers tab if we click on here you do have your layers section and right underneath there's this little black bar right here if you click or put the mouse on there you get the arrows you want to expand this because you want to be able to see the different layers that you're working with that's essentially what makes Photoshop so unique is that you can layer your project so if I just want to move this piece of text or just work on this certain area it doesn't affect the whole project so we'll get more into this later but you want to make sure you can see it okay so we have those two there in fact let's even move that down a little bit and we'll sort of let it float right here so history layers now on the left here uh, actually let's go over this first so if we go up to file and let's say you want to start a brand new project so if you want to start something new you go to new if you want to take an existing picture or flyer and you want to edit it or take something from it you would go to open so that's sort of how these two differ so if I go to new uh, it's going to ask you a couple of questions here. Now you can basically customize what you're working on. Maybe you have specific dimensions you need to fit. So you would either set it to a certain you know, width or height in inches or we can click here and you could change it. Centimeters, millimeters, points. If you're working on a website you would be working with points or excuse me you'd be working with pixels. So if you're designing something specifically to go on a website they may give you it has to be this many pixels by this many you would click here and then you would input the specific pixel number you need it to be and then you would want to set the resolution that you want it to be this is another important thing that people sort of overlook if your resolution is low for example 72 is low and the industry standard is about 300 so if you want it to be nice high resolution you want to make this 300 keep in mind that the higher the resolution um, if you're taking pictures that someone has already given you this will sort of complicate things so I try to keep this around 150 to 200 that's a safe parameter and we can talk a little bit more about that later and here under background content you can decide if you want the background to be all white do you want it to have a color or do you want it to be transparent which means you can see through it again if you were designing like a button for a website for example you'd want it to be transparent so that only the image that you're working with would be shown and the background would would there basically wouldn't be a background now under preset this is sort of what it's gonna save a lot of you is maybe you don't know the exact dimensions and you're a little lost there you can click on one of the presets that are already in here so for example you're trying to design a flyer that needs to be the size of a piece of paper you could go US paper and then it's going to automatically fit the dimensions for you so eight and a half by eleven okay and then under size we could do letter legal so you've got some you know wiggle room there and then we have a couple other options here so you're adding something specifically for film and TV for a mobile device for the web or even just a, a, a photo so if you're new and you're not really sure about dimensions I would just go with the US paper to get started and then you can name it here if you want or when it's time to save it it'll ask you again so not too big of a deal and from there we can hit OK and now we have a piece of paper now we have something to work with okay 
So next on the left here, you have a lot of different tools. This is sort of your toolbox over here. So this is the mouse pointer, and this is how you move things around. So like if I, like right now, this is uh, just a flat layer. It's a background. And first thing you want to do with this background is just double click right on the layer. Just click twice on your mouse. And this should pop up. It's going to say, hey, new layer. We're going to press OK. And now I can edit this and move this around. So I can, you know, move it. If I want it to be off the page or I can just center it. That's sort of what your mouse pointer does. This allows you to move things around. But you always want to select it first. You select it by right clicking and then you click on it. And then we can move it or put it back where it's supposed to be. I'm not going to go over every single tool in this video. I just want to go over the, the most important ones just to get started. So we have a selection tool. We have this cool... Um, Actually, if you right click on it, then it'll show you all the tools that are in that section. So, we've got lasso here, sort of grabbing text. This is sort of advanced stuff. We're not going to go over that right now. Uh, the magic wand tool you will use a lot because if you want to take the background off of something, maybe you want to, something has a black background and you want to make it solid or you want to take the background off altogether, that's what you would use this for. And we'll go over that in another video. Cropping tool, you're like, hey, this is you know a full sheet of paper I want to make this half you would click on the cropping tool and if you take your mouse and put it all the way up to the edge and then click we can actually drag it and make this smaller bigger or smaller so we can crop it down halfway or keep it big um, and then if you hit enter it'll crop only to the area that you want to still be there um, to sort of reset what you're doing, you click on the mouse pointer, and then it's going to ask you, hey, so are you, do you want to crop it? You don't want to crop it. We're going to hit don't crop for now. We have this tool right here, which is the eyedropper tool, which is a very important tool, because with this, it's going to allow you to copy a color. So if you want to take and use this color you saw, you know, this is the perfect color. I want this to be the background. You can literally use this to mimic uh, the same color. We'll go over that a little bit later. Again, just explanation for now. Um, in fact, actually, there's a different tool. I misspoke. So forget what I said about this. This is for something different. But it's an advanced thing. We're not going to go over that too much right now. Next, we have our paintbrush, which is right here. And with this, I can paint a certain color. So to sort of edit with this, you come down here, this is always what's going to be the color of your brush. So if I click on this little black square, that's how I get my default box and I can choose what color I want to work with. Um, so let's say we want to make it blue. Okay, I'm going to press OK. And then if you come up here, this is where you kind of choose what your brush is going to be. So I can make it a circle. There's a lot of presets in here which are going to make your life a lot easier. Hey, I need a square. All right, let's click on the square. I need a circle. Click on the circle. And up here under size is where you can drag it and get a bigger brush or an even bigger brush depending on how big or small you need it. So let's say I did 268. Okay, now I can bring this on the page and just click. And now I have circles just like that. Okay, and again, the way you sort of um, change, you come back up here and click on this little um, little drop down button here, and you just choose the shape that you want your brush to be. Okay, so just a basic overview there. Let's keep going down. You do have the stamping tool, which will allow you to create a stamp of some sort, and you can snap it, stamp it wherever you want. I don't use that one too often. We're not going to go over that too much. This is an important tool. This is your eraser. So if I want to erase something that's on the page, I'm going to click on here. And then I'm going to bring it onto the page. And then if you right click on your mouse or on your trackpad, you can control um, what shape your uh, eraser is. Just like this. And I can make it bigger or smaller. Let's say I make it 31. And now I can erase just like that. Now I'm erasing these little dots. See, I can click or I can hold down it and then erase a whole lot at one time. Okay. 
and next we have our this is our paint bucket so this is how you make a whole section one color um, really quick so I can click on paintbrush I'm gonna come down here and say hey what color do I want to make the whole area let's say let's make it uh, black okay click OK and now I'm just gonna click on the page now we're on this we're on a layer right now okay that's why I had you guys see this right here so we're just working with one layer right now but you can add layers on top of it so just keep that in the back of your mind and we'll go over that later but um, we're on one layer so whatever I do on if I click right now whatever I do is just gonna affect just what you see right here okay so I'm gonna click remember we're still on our paint bucket so I'm just gonna click and now the whole page is black except for the dots okay makes sense hopefully you're following me here now guess what what if oh I didn't mean to do that I want to undo that well that's where history comes in so we're on the the last thing we did was we did a paintbrush or a paint bucket excuse me so if I just go up one it takes it off just like that and I can keep going up and it will undo each thing that I did now this doesn't go on infinitely it only goes up so far so just keep that in mind but this is sort of how you erase or undo whatever you've done okay now let's keep going down to text so if I want to add words to this page I need to click on this little T and then I need to come on the page well actually before you go to the page you're gonna go up here and we're going to choose the the font that you excuse me that's not the font this is the uh, style so forget about that go over one to the left drop down here and we're going to choose the type of font that you want on your for your text so let's pick this one right here that one's good now I'm going to click on the page and I'm going to keep my finger on the button and I'm going to drag it so I can sort of so, like set up a text box so here's our text box and there's our cursor and then I can type hello it's me okay so you have some text on the page there now if I wanna uh, change the text I'm gonna select it I'm gonna click and drag just like you do in Microsoft Word and I can change the color right here just click on this little square up here I can make it red I can make it you know blue whatever press OK and now you'll notice you have a new layer your text is a separate layer from the background okay just keep that in the back of your mind we're building okay now we're gonna go to our uh, pointer and now our text is there it's done so notice this layer is highlighted in blue which means that I can move this piece of text around because that's what I have selected now if I come here and click on this layer which is our first layer the background if I try to move so I click on the page it's only gonna move the background you see so we're working with layers okay layers means that you know again one works in the one is separate from the other you see them together on the page but they're separate and if you want to add shapes we do that here If we click on this square we have or actually we right click on it excuse me into a square a rounded a rectangle tool ellipse tool all these or you or just to draw a line the line tool or we have a custom shape tool if we click on that you then come up here where it says shape and click on the drop down and you have a list of all these really cool preset shapes you can uh, add into your um, project okay and then we have our magnifying tool and um, basically if you want to magnify you're gonna click here and then click on the page and then you can get in closer and closer and if you want to zoom out we're gonna hit alt so put your finger on the keyboard find the ALT button that's next to the space bar and then notice now the cursor is a minus so plus minus and then click on the mouse and then now we can zoom out okay so this was part one again really basic um, we're gonna go over a lot more I'm gonna show you how to add pictures in we're gonna show you how to uh, customize this text even more and get really fancy in the later video so wanted to keep it not too long 
Um, hope you guys found this helpful. Make sure you jump to the next video and watch part two, part three. I'm going to teach you Photoshop for free, and you're going to be a whiz in no time. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care, and have a good one, guys.